QuickBooks Online 2023 mileage tracking reports by month using Excel and adjusting entry. Get ready to earn the skills needed to boost your bank books on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website broken out by category further broken out by course each course then organized in a logical reasonable fashion making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as excel practice problems pdf files and more like quickbooks backup files when applicable so once again click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it here we are in our quickbooks online test company file using the accountant view as opposed to the business view you can toggle between the two views by going to the cog up top and switching the view down below Duplicating some tabs to put reports in like we do every time. Right click in the tab up top to duplicate it. Right click in the duplicated tab to duplicate it again. Back to the tab to the middle as the one to the right is thinking reports on the left hand side. We want to open up one of the favorites that being the balance sheet report of course. Let's tab to the right and then go to the reports again on the left and close and let's open the profit and loss the PNDL. Closing the hamburger changing the range from i'm going to start off from 010123 to 123123 run it and then i'm going to tab to the left and close up the hamburger and change the range to the same 010123 to 123123 and run that now in prior presentations i'm going to go to the tab to the left we've been working on the mileage tracking feature within uh quickbooks and we've been entering data. We entered data for one month of basically miles. And we talked about how we might use this data to do an adjusting entry so we can track our information for tax preparation using a mileage method and even enter an adjusting entry possibly into our QuickBooks system. So we have a nice little reconciliation right there. So now I'm going to do the same kind of thing for the second month and see how we can basically sort our report that is here when we download the trips if we wanted to sort the reports in a bit more complicated situation where we had possibly multiple months and we want to break it out by month and then we have personal data as well as business data possibly tracking information not just for the miles here but possibly for a charitable deduction that might be helpful for taxes or for medical type of expenses that might be possible uh, for taxes as well. So the main reports that we have is they give you this little summary page up top, but the other reports isn't in the reports area. It's just going to be this export to a CSV file, which you can then convert to an Excel file if you have a more complex type of report that you're going to be dealing with. So we'll play with that for a while. Now, if I go to the tab to the to the right, last time we imagined that we stopped and we entered an adjusting entry at the end of may so let's make this the cutoff then as of 053123 and let's adjust it here we turned on the classes to do that and run this and then we had this nice little breakout using our classes so that we can have our totals not really messed up but then have an adjusting entry to adjust for the fact that we're not using the actual method but the mileage method for our column here that's basically on a tax method and this is kind of like our adjusting uh, entry uh, column over here all right now let's imagine we do some data input for the next month in june so we have some data that we can export so let's say we're adding our trips which we can do with the mobile app so as you have the mobile app if it's just tracking your miles as it's pulling into the information down here it might be unreviewed or you might have automatically categorized it between uh, the business personal and so on that pulls in or you can use the manual tracking up top we'll enter in manual here so i'm going to go up top of, and i'm going to say add a trip and then i'm going to say this is happening in june now so we're in june and let's enter a couple of these some of the standard ones we have the office to our client so we go from office to client number one and so there we have it and we have our round trip we'll keep it at the normal uh toyota default and we're going to say that it's going to be a meeting that we're going to once again 
So we'll say save that. And there's the calculation. Notice the calculations here are summing up for the entire year, which is perfect for, you know, taxes, but you might want more detail month by month if you're doing, you know, your information on a month by month breakout, and you might want more detail on your personal side of things, which could include the, the medical and, uh, and uh, say charitable. I'm gonna add this to the business side of things. I'm gonna add a meeting. Let's do another one. Let's say we have another one that happened once again in the following month, let's say the second. And let's say this one is gonna be from our office once again, this time to, to client uh, two. I'm gonna put on the round trip and we're gonna say it's for a meeting once again, boom. So we've got that one. I'm gonna pull this one over to the, to the business side of things. And so there it is. And so, well, I need a reason, a meeting. So now we've got this populating uh, kind of automatically. So then up top, let's imagine we have some other kinds of trips. So I'm gonna say now that I wanna put in my favorite locations and let's do another one. Another favorite location here is happens to be the 944, well, let's do, so I'm putting in the 1013 North Roxbury Drive. And I'm gonna say this is going to be for charity. Let's say this is some kind of charity that I'm going to. So I'm gonna say that's gonna be a charitable kind of item. Let's save that. It wouldn't let me save it because it wasn't coming from Google Maps. So I basically refreshed the screen. So it was giving me this nice drop down. And then I'm gonna say it's charity one, let's say. So I'm gonna say, all right, let's do that. And then maybe if I was using my mileage tracking app, I might make a rule for it. So I might manage rules down here and say, we're gonna say this is a mileage rule. And the starting point is gonna be my office. And then we're gonna go to uh, charity one. And this is gonna be on the personal side. And we'll say Toyota, that's good. Apply to past trips, no, I'm just gonna say boom. And so hopefully that will pull over automatically when I make trips, say with my mobile app uh, to the personal side of things. So I'm gonna keep that. And then if I add a trip and let's say this happened sometime in June, let's say fifth, and I'm gonna say that this is gonna be, so notice when I manually input it here, I still have to put in the, po the, the points. So I'm gonna say it's from my office to the, uh, charity one but if i was using my app and driving around that's when it might automatically pull into this information here and possibly automatically assign it to the purpose which i said uh was personal now i'd like to put it over to personal and then give it another designation of charity or medical type of of transactions right so i could say it's a, a charity transaction round trip and then save it and so once again, it didn't put the other side of the round trip in here, but I'm gonna save that on over to personal uh, as well. So on the personal side, we have those in here. So we've got these items on the personal side. Okay, and then let's do another one. I'm gonna add a trip and we're gonna say this one is gonna be sometime in June and we'll say the 13th. And we went from our office to the endpoint of the uh, charity one again. And let's say that this was personal and I'm gonna say it was charity, round trip, boom. And then let's add a medical one as well. So let's say I'm gonna add another one. Let's make a rule, a mileage rule. And I'm gonna say another rule. This one is gonna be the starting point of my office. And we're gonna go this time to see if this drop down thing works this time. This is 2002 Loma Vista. Loma Vista, 29, 20, 30 million dollar place here. Personal, Toyota, round trip it. So if I was using the app, it should do that automatically. I'm gonna save it. And there's our another, our another item. And then I'm gonna, but I'm gonna add the trip manually here. Say this happened on the 15th of June. We're going to say starting point office again, ending point is going to be, oh, hold on. I didn't, the ending point is going to be, 
Uh, let's just type it in again. I'm gonna say, it's gonna say 2002 Loma Vista, boom. Okay, I should have saved the location, but as a, as a favorite. But in any case, I'm gonna say that this is gonna be personal and I'm gonna say this is medical and round trip. So now I have that and let's add one more, let's add a rule this time. I'm gonna say not a rule, let's add a, a favorite location. And let's say that Loma one's a favorite location. So I'm gonna say this one is a favorite, 2002 Loma, not Lima, Loma, Loma Vista. And I'm gonna say this is medical one. It's not really my favorite because I'm going to the doctor and they do horrible things to me over there and tell me that it's for my own good, which I have doubts about, but <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what's going on, so I go anyways. Any case, so now we're gonna say add a trip and we're gonna go 19 and we're gonna go from our office to medical one personal, but this time I'm gonna make it a medical trip, which could possibly be deductible as well. So we've got those different designations, round trip it and boom. So there we have that. Now I'm gonna enter a little bit, some data here for this following month, which is going to be May for actual data that would come through the bank feeds, right? It would come through the bank feeds. And so let's add like a bank feed type of transaction with just an expense form, the actual expenses we're gonna pay for gas and whatnot. We'll just say this is the gas station that is quite high. They keep on blaming the gas station, but I know it's inflation. It's not really the gas. I'm not going to get mad at the gas station guy. It's the inflation's doing it, I feel like, but whatever. So and let's just pretend gas went up. I'll put it in there for 200 this time, or let's just say, yeah, let's just say 200. And then I'm not going to put it to any class. And then I'm going to save and new. And let's just put one more in there and let's do this one as the uh this was like the parking stuff because that's the one that could be included even if we do the mileage method so parking and fees populating automatically let's awfully high let's say it's like 150. all right so there are those let's save and close it this time and if i go on over to my my profit and loss i could run it by class but now i want to see may so i'm going to go from 05 Let's say 050123 to 0630. That's not a zero. 06323. And then I want to see it not by class, but months, month by month. So there's our June, uh, May, and June. Actually, I, I entered the other stuff before May, apparently. Let's go 010123. So I entered this stuff in January and February, and there's my June stuff. Okay, so now we're focused in uh, on June. So this is my actual expenses. So now we have a bit more complex situation with our data over here. This is my actual year to date uh, information, but I kind of want to break it out uh, and include my personal, which is the medical and the other and the, uh, and the business. So what I can do is hit my report up top and just download the trips, just like we did before. It opens in a CSV file, which we can open in Excel, but when you wanna adjust it in Excel, you gotta save it as an Excel file or it's not gonna save all your stuff that you do to it. So I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna put it into this random picture file. It's gonna be an Excel workbook. That's the point, that's what you have to do. So then we'll save it there. And then we can pretty pretty simply put this into a table, even though it's a lot of data. So let's just see if we can put this in a table and manage it fairly easily. I'm gonna make the, the top row, uh, I'm gonna make bold, and then I'm gonna convert this data into a table. So then I'm just gonna put my cursor in it and say insert and make it into a table, please. Boom. And that in and of itself makes it fairly manageable. So now I can, if I wanna see the the i'm gonna make this a little wider and these are the places we went so if i wanted and then if i want the totals down here i can add a total table 
And then the totals down here, this is probably going to want to be a sum function. And this is going to be a sum. Now, if I wanted to see just the business stuff, I can filter this down. I can say, let's see just the business like that. And so now we've got the business stuff. And if I wanted to see the business stuff just for the current month, then I can say, show me the business stuff just for uh, June. June, get rid of May. And so I can filter it down like that, which is quite nice. And of course I can put all the dates back and I can also filter it if I wanted to see my, my information uh, personal versus non-personal. So I can hit the drop down, and I have my personal and then I have some unreviewed stuff apparently that I didn't put in place. That's not good, but let me just check that out. I had some unreviewed items, so I'm not going to bother with that. You'd want to review them all <laughs> before pulling them over. But uh, then if I wanted to check this out, notice here it has the personal. So I could say, let's check out the personal stuff this way. And then I can further break it out by medical versus charity, which also could have some tax implications. So I can hit the drop down and say, I just want to see my charity miles and not the blanks. And so there's the charity. So that's pretty, that's pretty neat. We could do that with a table and we can sort this information, possibly tracking our charity versus our medical. And if we had, you know, so we could sort our data in a, in a couple different ways. And you can use these filtering options for charity or medical for whatever you want as another filtering field. If you want to track whatever is important to you to track under that category so that you can export the reports and see how much you drove to that category and have a log of it. So I'm going to, I'm going to unfilter this. And then the other way you can sort this data, uh, is with, uh, a, a pivot table. Let's say I'm going to add all this back in. So you could convert this into a pivot table. Once you have this data might as well do, cause it's a nicely formatted table for a pivot table. We could insert a pivot table over here and I'm going to, the whole thing I'm going to put in the existing worksheet. I'm just going to put it on the side. I got to make sure it's on the top. So I'm just going to put it over here. Boom. And now we can, we can sort our information in a pivot table format. For example, we can summarize the data possibly by type. I can pick up my type over here and then I want to say distance. And so then it, it distances it and it puts them automatically in the sum function. So now it's summing up, you know, everything all the distances, all, all the miles. So you get a nice tight little, uh, little summary data. You might want to break it out by vehicle so I can break it out by vehicle and then distance. So again, it kind of sums it up, gives you a, a little recap and a pivot table format. So I clean those off. Another way you might do it is you might say that you want to break it out by date. And so now I've got the dates on the left-hand side and maybe I want then the distance which is now summing up in the totals. And I can see kind of the breakout uh, of the months here. So now I've got the months and uh, the totals. And then you might want to also include a filtering option, possibly by uh, what, what did we call it? The type, the type, right? So now the type got pulled into to rows, but maybe I want to use it as like a filtering option. So now I've got the types up top here. So I can say, okay, here's May, June, and then I want to filter this thing by just the business stuff. Boom. So now that's another, you know, common kind of pivot, cool pivot table thing you could do with data like this. Another common thing you might do is like type, and then you might want the distance, which is going to pull over here. And then maybe you want to filter by this other further filtering down, which was the personal that, that, that broke out into the trip purpose, right? So within the trip purpose, I can put that maybe into the filter. Boom, it pulls it down here automatically. So it kind of has this added drop down, but you could put it into the filters. And so now you've got uh, the business personal and the unreviewed, but I can hit the drop down and say, I just want to see like the charity and then, and then filter. Now, obviously the business and personal go, I mean, the business goes away and now you just have the personal breaking out by charity. And then you can do the same for medical, right? If we wanted to do something 
uh, like that. All right, so just some good data to mess with some pivot tables with. So if I go back on over here and I wanted to, if I was entering this month by month, you might use this data to enter into your software like once a year or help give it to your tax professional. You can organize it this way and just give it to your tax professional and whatever makes sense. Or you might do adjusting entries at the end of the year to kind of get an idea or do an adjusting entry kind of monthly. So let's take this data and do our month, our monthly kind of adjusting entry. So if I look at this, let's filter it this way by just looking at, at May. And then I'm gonna say that I, I wanna look at uh, the meeting, the meeting with, let's say we just wanna look at the business stuff. So I'm gonna say just the business stuff. And so that comes out to our uh, 35.76. And if I multiply that times the rate, that's how they're getting this 23.42 for the rate. Now, hold on, I wanted this for June, the second month. Let's do this for June. So there we have it. So now we've got, uh, and not May. Well, May's still there, just June. <laughs> okay, so there we have it. So so it's just a, 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 a whopping $11 that we're gonna say on the mileage method. So let's do our, our journal entry thing we did before, uh, but now for the second month. So if I go to the income statement and I look at this just for, for 060123, and I run it here. So uh, there's June, all we have are these items in that month. I'm gonna say, let's see this on a classes breakout now. We don't have any classes yet. And I'm gonna do this breakout, basically removing these two amounts or just this one, because that's not deducted under the mileage method. And then I'll add the deduction that we calculated over here for that month which is just the $11. I know they don't tie out because we just randomly put in dollar amounts here, but they would be closer in practice, you would think, because the mileage method, the IRS is trying to attempt it to be somewhat approximating the actual. So if I go back on over, I'm gonna say there's $200 that I'm going to make a journal entry for, removing it for taxes, and then I'll put in the amount we, we can deduct for this month. So I'm gonna go to the tab to the left, plus button and I'm gonna make our journal entry again like we did in the prior presentation, but this time for the end of June, this is gonna be a monthly adjusting entry, which you might do in practice on a yearly basis if you just wanna do it once a year, but just to get the idea, we're gonna say that this is going to be going to auto expense and this is gonna be for 200 and then the other side is also gonna to go to auto uh, Wait, not just auto expense, there's an auto tax adjustment. The auto tax adjustment that we set up last time, which is a new account that's just gonna have our adjustments sub account of the auto expense. So what I would like it to do then is reduce the, 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 un, the one with no class, and then I'm gonna make the, this one then be our tax adjustment. So there's our tax adjustment. So this will just be a column by column adjustment. Won't have any net impact on this account because the two will total out and back to zero. So let's save and close it. If I go back on over here, just to check it out, boom. And so now we have our, this, it doesn't have any net effect on the total if we took the classes off. And now this not specified area has been adjusted to account for decreasing the amount that we're not gonna be able to deduct on an actual method, keeping the 150 we can deduct. And this is gonna be kind of the journal entry so we can see uh, the detail of what we're doing. And then I'm gonna put on the books the amount that we can deduct just for the second month, which we say in our, this 11, 1101. That's what we're calculating, noting that I'm, I had to kind of export it out here to see it because if I look at this report, it's only kind of given us the summary data for uh, the entire year here, right? We could have a custom date. Let's do the custom date. And this is for June uh, 1st to June 30th. And so there's, yeah, it gives us a custom date. So we can do it that way as well to kind of double check our numbers. We could sort it that way, but it still doesn't give us all the personal stuff. But there it is, there's the 1101. And so we're gonna say, all right, let's enter a journal entry for that one. That's what we get to deduct. 
And so we're going to say, all right, this is going to be a, a auto tax, auto tax adjustment for 1101. And that's going to go into the unclassified and the other is going to be auto tax adjustment. And this is going to be 1101. I should put a description, ADJ adjusting entry tax or auto let's say for second month and there we have it and then this is going to increase the this is going to increase the unclassified so this needs the class this is the tax adjustment so there it is once again having no impact on the net income uh, so it shouldn't be too intrusive to the bookkeeping side of things so if i go back on over run the report again so so now we've removed the 200 and we and we put on the books uh the 11 so the net adjustment then was was the 188 so if i go into this account then for example we have our adjusting entries or two adjusting entries that net out back down to zero and what is included in this month is then the parking 150 plus this 1101 plus 1101 which is the 16101 so pretty neat because then again it kind of gives us this this adjusting this tax adjusting entry worksheet just within uh quickbooks which is and it's not very intrusive because if i add this other account that just goes in and back out again now we could do the same thing if we had used this mileage stuff to figure our if we had some mileage deductions for uh the the personal for for say the medical and charity right i can sort by the by the by the charity and maybe i get a deduction for that but charitable deductions are much more complicated to kind of think about because they're on the schedule a and you might not be using the schedule a the rate is different and then there's a floor that you have to do so uh, so oftentimes it's more complicated to calculate the, uh, the, well, there might not be a floor with charity, but there is with the medical expenses. So these two are more diff, they're usually not as, as big a benefit unless you had a lot of charity or medical expenses. And they're not as straightforward because they're itemized deductions to calculate kind of as you're going. Cause you, so you kind of need tax software to actually figure what that's going to actually do. But if you were doing your taxes and, and you were, wanted to have a nice worksheet to track what what you came up with for the tax adjustment for like charitable miles and or 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 uh, the medical miles that you calculated uh in the tax software you can use this similar method for entering into quickbooks these kind of tax adjustments so that you can see the ending result for your net income on uh, you know, like a book basis and then the tax adjustments and then the tax basis giving you kind of a reconciliation so that if you have, there's an audit or something, you can tie out ex to what you did on the tax return. So there's that. And then of course we did this on a, on a two month basis. So if I run this from, let's go from 01, 01, 23 to 12, 31, 23, then now we have a, a similar thing for the, for the whole year, the year to date we made two adjustments on a monthly basis, which still kind of tie out here. So they still net out to zero. So if we did this for multiple months on a monthly basis or in multiple years, if we did this in the following year, this whole thing's just going to roll into equity. So it doesn't really bother the bookkeeping uh, much here because then it's going to wash out to equity. And, and if they're not using classes for anything else, it might not be uh, an issue for anything. And then uh and you can see here that if i looked at the totals we can say this is going to be for taxes for the two months it, uh, this ties out to the parking which is deductible even if we do the plus we had then if i do this for the whole year plus the 34.43 which is at the yeah the 55443 and this 34.43 should tie out over here. If I was to say, I want to just see all of this. And then I want to see all of this. And then 
What's where's my filters? Get out of here filters. And then I want to see this just for the business. Boom. Business 3443. And that ties out to the 3443. Uh, so just a couple, some different ways that we could possibly utilize this mileage tracking tool.